Hey everyone, I hope you're doing well. In this video, we're going to talk about ratios, what they represent, and how to write them. We'll talk about the three forms of ratios, which we can write as a to b with words, a to b as a fraction, and a to b with a colon. I'll also talk about equivalent ratios and how we can write them. For example, we could have an equivalent ratio like 4 to 6, which is equivalent to 2 to 3. I'll also cover different types of ratios like part to part, part to whole, and whole to part. And to help you see and understand ratios a little bit more clearly, I'll go over some diagrams and some application questions as well. At this point, I'd appreciate it if you could like this video, grab some paper and something to write with, and let's do some math together. Let's practice writing the forms of ratios. Here we have four circles, then we have six of these squares, and we have two of these triangles. Ratios compare similar types of things, and we can write them in three different forms. The first form we have is using words, and in doing so, the word we're going to use to represent a ratio is typically the word two, a to b. The second form we have for ratios is in fraction form. And while it looks like and has some similar features to fractions, we want to remember that we're talking about ratios here. And the last one is going to be by using a colon, which is two dots. When dealing with ratios, we can use the word two, a fraction bar, and a colon. Let's try writing a ratio together in all three of the different forms. We're going to write the ratio of circles to squares. The word two lets us know we're dealing with a ratio, and circles we have four of them, and squares we have six. We have a ratio of four to six. If we can simplify, always do so, and since two is a GCF, we can divide them both by two and write our new ratio of two to three. Be sure to always simplify your ratios before you write them in your three different forms as two to three with words, two to three with a fraction bar, and then two to three using a colon. These are our three ratios that represent the ratio of circles to squares. This is going to be a part to part ratio since the circles and the squares only make up part of all the shapes. Now let's go ahead and try another one. Let's write the ratio of squares to triangles. Here's the word two again, and since squares come first, we're gonna start with six, six squares, and then two for two triangles. Since we can simplify this and divide both numbers by two, we can write the ratio is three to one, okay? So we have three squares for every one triangle, and we could write it again using a fraction bar, and we can say three to one using words. All three of these mean three to one. That's our ratio of squares to triangles here. And once again, this is a part to part ratio since they don't make up all the shapes. While we just tried two examples with part to part ratios, let's try something different here. Let's write the ratio of circles to all shapes, which is everything included. And when it says all shapes, be sure to include the circles as well. Every shape counts when we're talking about all of them. Four plus six plus two means there's 12 total shapes. So it says circles to all shapes, so circles there's four of them, and all shapes there's 12. We have a ratio of four to 12, and simplify by dividing both by four. So we have a ratio of one circle for every three total shapes. We can write this as one to three with a colon, one to three with words, and one to three as a fraction bar. All of these represent the ratio of circles to all shapes here. Here, we have a part to whole ratio. Here's one more example, but be sure to pay attention to the words that are before the word two and the words that are after the word two. We're gonna write the ratio of all shapes to squares and triangles. Notice how all shapes is before the word two and then squares and triangles are after the word two. Before the word two, we have all shapes and there's 12 of them. So we'll write 12 to, and we have to find the squares, which is six and triangles, which is two. Simplifying that, we have 12 to eight by adding them together. And we can simplify this by dividing both by four, which is their GCF. Here we can get three to two, which is our ratio of all shapes to squares and triangles. Writing it as a colon, a fraction bar, and using words, the ratio is three to two. Now let's talk about equivalent ratios. Suppose we have the scenario that we have nine burritos to every 12 tacos. We can write our ratio of nine burritos to 12 tacos using words as nine to 12. Dividing nine and 12 by their GCF of three, we get the ratio of three to four or three burritos for every four tacos. Just like getting equivalent fractions, you can multiply the top and bottom of a ratio to get an equivalent ratio. Multiplying a ratio of three to four by two and two on top and bottom, we get a new equivalent ratio of six to eight or six burritos for every eight tacos. 
We could also take our simplified ratio of 3 to 4 and multiply both top and bottom by 3 to get a new equivalent ratio of 9 to 12, or 9 burritos for 12 tacos. And for one more example, we can multiply both top and bottom by 4 to find that we have 12 burritos for every 16 tacos. These are all equivalent ratios. Let's look at another one. We have 72 TikToks for every 4 reels. Beside the word 2, for every also represents a ratio. Let's start by writing this ratio in colon form of 72 to 4, and then rewriting it into fraction form as 72 to 4. Dividing 72 and 4 by their GCF of 4, we get a simplified ratio of 18 TikToks for every one reel. While this is the most simplified equivalent ratio, we could get more equivalent ratios by multiplying by other numbers. Doubling the TikToks and reels, we get a new equivalent ratio of 36 to 2. And we can also multiply the TikToks and reels by 5 to get a total of 90 TikToks for every 5 reels. And multiplying both by 20, we can say we have an equivalent ratio of 360 TikToks for every 20 reels. These are all equivalent ratios. For this last part, let's talk about how to represent ratios using diagrams and apply those to applications. Suppose Christopher makes 5 videos in 6 hours. The question is how many videos can he make in 12 hours? The two things we're comparing here are videos and hours. Before we start drawing a diagram, let's make a key, and I'm going to make one circle represent one video, and one square represent one hour. And to begin drawing our diagram, we can start by drawing five circles to represent the five videos, and then draw six squares to represent the six hours. This represents the original rate we're given, and because we're asked how many videos Christopher will make in 12 hours, we're going to draw 12 squares to represent those 12 hours. To get from the original 6 hours to the 12 hours, we would have to multiply the hours by 2, so we would multiply the videos by 2. Hopefully it makes sense that we'll draw 10 of these circles on top. Here's what represents the 12 hours and the 10 videos. Drawing a diagram can help us visualize what a ratio looks like. Therefore, if Christopher can make 5 videos in 6 hours, then he could make 10 videos in 12 hours. And here's one last one. The question is, if Lulu watches two anime episodes for every five YouTube videos she watches, then if she watches 14 anime episodes, how many YouTube videos would she watch? The two things we're comparing are the anime episodes and the YouTube videos. We should start by making a key, and one anime episode will be represented by a circle, and one YouTube video will be represented by a square. For the ratio we're given, let's draw two circles and five squares. And since we're told that Lulu watches 14 anime episodes, we need to draw 14 of these circles. Now to get to two anime episodes to 14, we'd have to multiply that by 7. So to be consistent, we'll also multiply the YouTube videos by 7. Instead of 7 squares, we're going to draw 35 of them. So here we can see for 14 anime episodes, we'll have 35 YouTube videos. Using this diagram, we can conclude that if Lulu watches 14 anime episodes, she would watch 35 YouTube videos. And that wraps up this video on an introduction to ratios. Keep in mind that there are three forms of ratios, and one of them even looks like a fraction. Ratios are helpful in helping us understand part-to-part -part relationships as well as part-to-whole relationships. I hope you found this video helpful, and I'll see you in the next one.